everyone. We are now going to go over the bone marrow prostatometry from a 60 year old female with leukocytosis and lymphocytosis. So let's start with CD45 versus side scatter. And we, in this plot, we have 38% lymphocytes. So the patient has lymphocytosis and leukocytosis. So our population interest is um, lymphocytes. And we are going to just follow through those cells here. Um, like ex we expect the CD45 versus side scatter plot shows that our lymphocytes are expressing bright CD45 and they have low side scatter. In CD3 versus CD7 plot, we see that the majority of the lymphocytes are CD3 positive, meaning they are T cells. Um, so almost 70% or more than 70% are T cells. We have a few cells that are negative for three and seven. So those are um, possibly B cells, or maybe there is some contamination from the nearby gates. So this might actually include some monocytes here. And the seven positive cells that are negative for three are usually the NK cells. Now, when we see the blue population, which is the T cells um, in the next plot, seven versus 25, we only have the blue population and majority of the cells, 86% are positive for seven and 26. So that's kind of the normal distribution. If you remember, um, CD26 is last in uh, sessory cells or in mycosis fungoides. So uh, we use this as a marker for CTCL, like cutaneous T cell lymphomas to identify the abnormal cell population. And, um, but here it is positive. In CD3 versus CD4, CD3 versus eight and four versus eight, we see that uh, there is a population of four, eight double positive T cells. Very, uh, there is a scant population of eight positive cells. Majority of the cells are either four positive or four eight double positive, kind of continuous in the spectrum. So we see that here too. Um, we see a small population that is just clearly only eight positive, but um, we see a larger population that is CD4 and CD4 eight double positive. We see that here too. So that's kind of abnormal. And um, all these cells, they have CD7 expression. Uh, there's a small subset of CD4 positive cells that lose CD7 and that's not, um, uncommon, we see that in almost all of the specimens. Uh, this is again showing that CD7 is positive on the T cells. Um, again, CD26 is positive. In alpha, beta versus gamma delta, we see that majority of these, almost all of these cells are alpha, beta, with a really few gamma delta cells. But that's normal, right? Because um, if you remember the T cell maturation pathway, um, when um, the cortical, in, uh, in the cortical stage, majority of the still cells proceed to the alpha beta stage, um, I mean, alpha beta uh, uh, pathway, and then they become either CD4 or CD8 positive, and then we have different subsets in CD4 positive T cells. And only a small proportion of cells that enter the thymus, um, actually um, either from the subcapsular thymus or um, before the thymus, they just directly go into the gamma delta pathway and then they um, only a small portion becomes gamma delta T cells and they get restricted to uh, organs such as you know, spleen or skin or mucosal tissue. But majority of the cells both in the circulation or in lymph nodes are alpha beta. So this is not abnormal, this is okay. But here, this TRBC1, that can indicate clonality. So let's see what TRBC1 is. So um, like I said, majority of the T cells are alpha beta. So now in the beta chain, we have constant region. Uh, there are two constant regions. One is beta constant region one, the other one is beta constant region two. So that's what we see here, T cell receptor, beta constant region one. So that's what this flow plot is for. So in a normal um, um, specimen, you will see a mixture of uh, you know, the T cells will be a mixture of both T cell receptor beta constant, uh, beta constant region one positive cells and beta constant region two positive cells. So if there is only one population, either just one positive or two positive, that means it is monoclonal or uh, monotypic. So it's like kappa or lambda 
uh, you can use TRPC1 in that way. So what we do with flow cytometry is if we, TRPC1 is positive in a T cell population, uh, I mean, it is positive in majority of the T cell population, like that is greater than 85%. We think that those T cells are monoclonal and they express the beta concentration one. And uh, if it is negative in a, the majority of the population that is negative in 85%, then we think that these are expressing TRBC2. Um, so it's an indi indicator of clonality. Here we see that majority of the T cells express like we have 70% of the cells of T cells out of 70%, 60% is expressing TRBC1. So these are clonal um, cells. For example, uh, we have some CD8 positive cells, which are clearly normal. So this, this could include some of those cells, but majority of your abnormal cells, which are these are TRBC1 positive. So they are clonal. And on further uh, evaluation, we see that these cells are negative for CD16, 57, and 56. So they are not uh, expressing any <clears throat> NK or LGL associated markers, but they express a bright CD52. So CD52 is usually positive um, in uh, T pro lymphocytic leukemias. Not only that, this 4 8 double positive in a mature T cell lymphoma. You know that 4 8 can be positive in you know, immature ALLs, but in a mature T cell lymphoma, 4 8 double positivity is kind of unique to T pro lymphocytic leukemias. And um, they are clonal, they are positive or either fully positive or negative for TRBC1. And they can express CD52. CD52 is also of therapeutic importance in these cases. Um, we have target, uh, targeted therapy for that. Uh, it's called alemtuzumab. So even if you cannot perform CD52 by flow, there are immunostains for that. Some people even send it out for performing the immunostains if they don't have it. So um, nowadays clinicians definitely want to know CD52 expression on the neoplastic cells in TPLL. Clinically, they will present with very high um, uh, leukocyte count and lymphocytosis count. Sometimes they will have, you know, uh, a doubling up of their uh, lymphocyte count or the WBC count every two days. So they have a very aggressive presentation. This is an aggressive tumor. And um, the counts are usually like in the range of more than 100,000. So the things that you have to remember is it's a mature T cell lymphoma and it will express all the pan T cell markers like two, five, three, and seven, just like what we see in this case. And it will show, um, it will be either four positive or sometimes rarely eight positive, or it can be four and eight double positive in 25% um, of the cases. And that's kind of unique to TPLL. They express CD52. And there is another antigen called TCL1, uh, which will also be positive in these cases. And some labs have flow cytometry for TCL1 as well. And um, um, and the other thing that you have to remember is CD3 expression. It can sometimes be dim in these cases or sometimes even negative. So very rarely you can have, you know, the population expressing two, five, seven, and then uh, it will be negative for CD3. So this is um, uh, the, <clears throat> the phenotype characters of the pro-lymphocytic leukemia. Thank you.